Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Paige, this is Seeking Alexandria, and guys, I'm super, super excited to dive into today's video because I've never done a video like this before, and it's something I've been kind of playing around with in my head for quite some time. I wanted a way to kind of showcase a brand, what I love from it, what I don't love from them, and really just kind of guide you through what I think a brand really does well, and some items that I think maybe I don't love so much that I know other people love, and explain why I personally don't love them. Now, I did choose to get this series started off with Jeffree Star Cosmetics and I chose his collection mainly because a, well, a, I have a ton of pieces. You guys know I've been reviewing Jeffree Star for quite some time, but I chose this collection specifically because there are a lot of products from him that I feel like a lot of people don't love for one reason or another, but my view on his products and what I love and why I love it is a little bit different than what I've heard. So that's kind of number one. I wanted to take a different tack at it um, and just showcase what I do and don't love. But this is also coming fresh off of his launch of his new Jawbreaker collection, which I really thought was so beautifully done. The way that I'm going to be structuring this video is I'm starting from 10. I'm going to work all my way up to number one. Now, I want us to picture an entire collection, right? Everything that he offers. And I am starting off at what I believe are the worst five, the, the five things that just do not work for me no matter what. Now, if my bottom five work for you, that's fantastic. Use them. Love them. I love that for you. And just the same, if my top five, you hate them, that's fine too. It's all personal preference. And I just wanted to showcase again, like what I love, what I don't love and why. Now, while we're doing this process, that means that 10, 9, 8, 7, and 6 are going to be my bottom five, and these are ranked in a particular order. And that means when we get to the top five, it will be 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 are my top five favorites, and five being my least favorite out of my top five favorites, if that makes sense. So, okay, enough talking aside. Let's go ahead and kick this off with number 10, my least favorite thing. You guys, I tried. I've tried so hard. His concealers, I, I tried so hard to love these. You have no idea. I did do a full video and review of these. I will link it up here. I won't be linking all the videos from these because some of them are from a really long time ago, but this is one that is recent and I can definitely talk about it. So his concealers, when they launched, I had several issues with these. First of all, I don't know if it's that they're too hydrating for my under eye. I don't know if it's that they just set funny. I do not know what it is that everybody else loves about these and I just cannot use them. They separate on my under eye. They don't mesh with my foundation. They literally repel off of my face. My second thing that I don't love about these is the amount of products you get for the price. I actually did in that video, I did a full like cost breakdown analysis of how much product you get with other concealers versus this one. I'm, I don't remember the specifics. It's all in that video. I really do like break it down for you guys. So for me, the cost of this, like it's not a good value. Even if the formula worked, the value isn't there. And then to top it off, this packaging, I know it's really cutesy and everything and some people love it. Some people hate it. Personal preference is what it is. But for me, these little friggin' stars, I've had two of them break off. I stepped on one. Y'all, you want to step on a Lego, try stepping on this tiny ass little ninja star. Girl, it hurts. It about amputated my little toe. And I was not a fan. I like my little toe. So for me, these concealers just all around as a package deal have not been something that I could use. They haven't been a good value. The packaging hasn't been the most hospitable for me. I wish overall that I could have used this more. Even the color correctors, I was just like, they don't really work for me. Okay, guys, so for number nine, I'm going to be entering into something that a lot of you might be surprised by, his lip ammunitions. I do not like these. I don't know what the deal is. I have three different campaigns here. I've tried them multiple times, and I just, I don't care. I can never seem to get enough use out of these. They are way too, like, sticky matte for me to enjoy. Right here, this is the shade Calabasas. This is the one that I tried to use the most, and for some reason, when I go to use it, it feels so thick and so cakey but for me these are all about when I put them on my lips I can literally feel this big thick almost goopy mess of matte lipstick and it's a very rare day that I try a lipstick that feels this thick on and like I've tried all of them I've tried like Maybelline Colourpop high end low end Pat McGrath all of them and these ones for me are just a little too thick when I put them on and a lot of times when I go in with a bullet lipstick I like to go in with something on top a little bit of gloss maybe or a little bit of a different color and with his I just cannot layer these like it got to the point where I couldn't layer them and even when I would go in and apply it to the lip I would have to go in and like pat off 
a bunch of the product and like really squish it into my lips and then blot it off and then I could maybe add a little bit of gloss like I just had to work with them so much and then these other two right here these are his glitter formulas and this one is in the shade champagne tears now these I honestly thought I would love them a little bit more they have a little bit of like a sheen to them and for me these are just a chunky glittery lip mess and when you have to apply these it's a really really like rough rub so what ended up happening actually I could show you when you go to apply this on you have to press really hard to get like any sheen on top of it and then all of the lipstick on your lips just transfers over to this bullet so it's like no matter what you do you're not able to just keep the lipstick you have on on and then apply this over top like you can't go in and apply it with your finger and do it that way that's how you do it with a gloss that's what makes sense but with these every time I tried to use them I was just left with the, like this weird undesirable film everywhere whether it was on the lipsticks on my lips and then they're gritty and they're goopy and I just oh my god like I tried so many times to love these for me these aren't worth it I would rather buy an affordable lipstick I would rather buy honestly I would rather buy pretty much any lipstick um, over these as far as a bullet goes which is really sad because he has some beautiful freaking colors but these are just oh my god they just feel they, my lips feel like they're in prison and my lips don't like to be in prison oh no thank you so now we're moving on to number eight and number eight and number nine really were in a competition for which one was worse and as soon as I touched those lip ammos <laughs> they took the worst spot of the two so now moving on to number eight I will introduce to you Jeffree Star's Skin Frost now for me as you can tell I have there's four right here I think I have two or three more in my bin for some reason somehow somewhere some why these ended up getting so freaking thick and chunky and just like crumbly like I don't even know the word um I will show you with what used to be my old favorite which was the shade ice cold right here oh my god you guys this was so good and let me just say the pan size of these like what you got for the amount of money you paid everything about them was great you had a ton of product the packaging was big and beautiful and vibrant and I love that it came with a mirror like this overall as an item if I would have loved the highlight is amazing for what you get this is what I didn't like I'm gonna go ahead and show you Here's a bit like look at that. That's got some pigment, right? I don't know if it's going to show up on camera, but when I swatch that, it is so chunky. All right, so I brought this in. I lowered the light, and I don't know if you can see the texture of this on my skin, but it is so thick feeling and no matter how I try to work it out and meld it in with the skin that chunk just does not go away and y'all let me tell you I have tried I tried so hard to make these work because this color on my skin is so beautiful it's this nice like frosty light white icy type shade and as I work it out it just clings to any and all texture on camera it looks beautiful in real life it looks atrocious these they have like this weird way of grabbing my texture and like almost building on top of it you know how like if you picture a snowball like hello if you're if you're anywhere that there is snow what happens when a snowball rolls down a mountain it like picks up product and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger that is what these do to the texture on my skin they somehow grab onto my texture and they make it bigger and then as you buff it in or try to apply more try to smooth it out try to press it in no matter what you try to do all of the product never never smooths out it just builds and creates more and more texture more and more mountains on my face and for some reason I just cannot get that chunk to go away so for me I'm not gonna keep droning on I think you guys get the picture these are just not it for me all right so number seven might be a little controversial I have a feeling there's a lot of people that are going to think it should have been lower and I don't disagree with you but those other products for me were like they've been thorns in my side for a long time um, this one is newer so it's not as thorny but I still don't love it the blue blood palette y'all please do not hate me I tried so hard to love this for me this palette palette is just first of all I don't love it I feel like the formula there's something in here that is inconsistent the color scheme is like all blue like there's not even variation to it it's like blue 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 teal blue blue light brown wealthy a bunch of shades up here which by the way don't even show up on my skin tone and like I just I don't know there are good aspects to this palette don't get me wrong like I don't straight up think it's the worst palette I've ever used but from Jeffree Star this is just not the palette that I would have expected as far as like the inclusivity of it the color story I don't have a problem with saying like this is I want I want 
want a blue palette. I want something that's blue driven. I want to be able to see that color story really thriving. I don't have an issue with that. What I don't see in this though is the ability to create a look that isn't completely blue, if that makes sense. As far as a consumer goes, I personally would never reach for a palette that has so much blue and for the price and for what you end up getting, I just, I don't know, it wasn't worth it to me. When I reviewed it as well as now, I will state there's a few of these colors that when I applied them, they literally didn't show up on my skin. One of which being, what is this, mint tea. That one didn't show up at all. Um, I'm cold, barely showed up, untouchable, and priceless. Like these top four mattes for me were basically useless. For me, this palette was just such a miss in so many ways. Okay, so for my next spot, I am going to just throw it up there and explain because there's a lot of explaining to do, Lucy. His lip and eye liners, as you can see, your girl has a lot, and I have a lot of opinions on these. So, first thing I'm going to say is that I do not like these. These, in, like, my mind's eye, these should be ranked lower than almost everything else I've talked about. I have several reasons why. However, they got bumped a couple points because they are still technically something I can use, i.e. I can't use the concealer in pretty much any way, like I couldn't find a use for it. Um, the lip ammos, I can't find a use for these because they're just so uncomfortable to wear. Same with the highlights, so on and so forth. So these got bumped up because I can technically use them, even though I do not like several aspects of them. So I hope that makes sense. Like for me, I just want you guys to know in my mind, these are like spot number nine or 10, but they got bumped up because I put a huge emphasis on being able to use product like that's really important to me I don't care if I buy a concealer just as an example and say I hate it as a concealer But I could use it as a foundation Okay, like I could get behind that. Hey, I bought this concealer. I can't use it as a concealer I can use it as a contour. I can use it as a this if I can find a way to get use out of that product and enjoy it Still that is going to help soften the blow of not being able to use it for what I wanted I know that's weird But that's just kind of how my mind thinks like I don't want to be wasteful ever whether I bought it or not Whether it was paid for whether it was a free sample. I don't care I just don't like to be wasteful. So for me these did like I said they got bumped up because I could use them but girl you're about to hear the wrath. So number one, these are $16 a piece. And at first I was like, okay, listen, I can get behind a high-end lip liner. I buy tons of high-end lip liners. I have in the past. I love Buxom. I love Pat McGrath. I love, I love lots of high-end lip liners. Okay. They're great. Do I think that you need them? Absolutely not. And I'm pretty sure that my last favorites video, which I'll link up here where I talked about how much I love my ColourPop lip liners, that ought to prove everything I ever need to say, because these are amazing and they're a couple dollars a piece. Now that being said, basically what you are purchasing is for $16, you are getting the ability to sharpen a colored pencil and I don't know why I have such a hard time with this because like I said I bought other high-end lip liners you have to sharpen them but for me when I look at these I'm just like okay look we have $16 we have this sharpenable pencil which in his video he did explain he has a lot of friends that are makeup artists and he had them test these they explained to him that they don't like the twist up ones because they have to worry about germs so they prefer sharpenable pencils okay fine if that's the demographic you want to go after that's okay I personally would rather have a twist up one but that's just me personal preference is okay for $16 quite frankly I wish this little little plastic ass cap thing I wish it could have served a function I wish it could have been a sharpener I wish it could have I don't know delivered my groceries anything I just wish it would have been functional because yes it's cute and everything but at the end of the day you have a little plastic cap and you have a $16 colored pencil first of all that's like a huge I don't know why that that just sits so odd with me. I feel like that's something I would say about any lip liner. Like I want them to have a quality to them. Now, if this was super amazing, super creamy, lasted on the lips, I would be able to overlook the price tag. I would be able to overlook the cap. I'd be able to overlook a lot of things. Okay. Now packaging and all that moving past it, I'm going to like let that little, let that go. Cause my God, I have a hard time letting stuff go, but let's go ahead and talk for a second about their intended uses. So these are safe for the eyes, the lips, the skin. You can do whatever you can draw all over yourself with them and they're not going to hurt you. You. However, these are way, way too creamy to the point where when you go to use them and like press on them, it just comes off almost in chunks. It's so creamy. Now, normally I don't have an issue with a good creamy lip liner, but this is too creamy. This takes it to the next level to where every time you use this, you will have to sharpen it because it will immediately dull down to this tiny little nubbin. And I actually tested that one more time before I went in with this video. I grabbed a color. I don't know which one because I just mixed them all up, but I went in, I sharpened it with one of my sharpeners. So it was good and pointy. 
I lined my lips. I filled my lips in one more time just to test them out, just to make sure before I made this video that I hadn't changed my mind. I went ahead, I filled in my lips, and by the time I was done, it was the tiniest little nub left on top of the pencil. And I just can't stand that. I don't have time every single time I do my lips to sharpen a pencil. Now, I'm even going to go one step farther. Even if I get past the packaging and then I get past the fact that I'd have to sharpen my pencil every single time, the way that these work on the lips is so unenjoyable. I'm wearing one right now. First thing I will tell you is that they are painfully matte, matte to the point where they stick to your lips and they feel uncomfortable until eventually in about a half hour, hour, they just completely flake and crumble off. That includes your lips and your eyes. I also went in and lined my eyes with his black shade and they are already starting to give me like little fallout crumbles. I just wiped them off in between the last two takes and I cannot stand that about these. Like the way that they apply is just so unbecoming for me. And I'm not going to keep droning on about it because y'all know I can keep going for days. But for me, these are just, oh, these are not it. I can't. No. All right, so now we're moving on to the top five, and this is where it is going to get fun because I think, honestly, these will be a lot easier and a lot quicker for me to get through. So I'm going to go ahead and kick off the top five with a new product, which is why it's in the number five spot. I am wearing it right now, one of his glosses. Now, I actually do enjoy these, and it's in the number five spot for a couple of reasons. Um, one, I do have multiple shades of these. I think I have like eight or so, and I haven't tried all the formulas out consistently, so I didn't want to say as a whole I love the gloss. What I will say though, this shade right here, this is in Shockwave. I've used quite a few of his more glittery ones that have like that nice duochrome or glitter effect. They are really, really beautiful. The way that they sit on the lips is gorgeous and I love the thinness of these. They feel like a nice lightweight kind of thin oil and they last really, really nicely on the lips. Mm, the shine is gorgeous. They smell amazing. Um, these are getting the fifth favorite spot for a couple of reasons. Number one, like I said, I haven't tried all the formulas. Number two, they are newer, so I haven't really had a chance to love them over a long period of time as much as I have these other products that I'm about to talk about. But overall, the formula of these is so, so comfortable and just so enjoyable. I will keep working with them, but as a way to start off my top five, I wanted to throw it in there because, girl, she cute. Now, next up, I figured, since how in the bottom we had the skin frost in the top we had to have the supreme frost and this is my favorite shade this is in snow globe it is so freaking gorgeous now this is in spot number four for a couple of reasons um first of all the pan between the two got a lot smaller it no longer has a mirror that really really sucks as far as packaging goes because those are two of the things that i said i loved about those that i don't love about these however the formula of this is so improved it feels so much nicer it's silky and this color has like this beautiful champagne reflect on the skin where it looks beautiful and luminescent but when you work with it if you want to sheer it out you can get just like this nice ambient sparkle to your cheek it's hard to describe on swatch but when I put it on it really is beautiful now that being said this is in the number four spot because I don't love the amount of glitter kick you get out of this out of his highlights I do love this formula I just wish that it would stay more together when I apply it it. This is the type of product that I can't go in really and apply with just a big old highlight brush and really get after it because if I do that, it just kicks glitter everywhere. But if you go in and you're tight with your highlight and you really just kind of start small, keep it small or pat it in with your finger, the color is beautiful. And while I'm on the topic of highlights, you might be wondering why isn't his sarcophagus palette or his Northern Lights palette in here? If those would have been in this video, they would have probably been in the bottom. For me personally, the Supreme one, it doesn't it's not that the formula is bad, it's just that I can't use all of the shades. I can only use one of them. And I find that the other five shades are a little bit random. And same with the Northern Lights palette. I can only use one or two of the colors. So for me, it's not so much that the formula is an issue. It's just that they're not very wearable for me personally. So if you're wondering where those are at, they're probably in my bottom. Um, but it's not because the formula is bad. It's just because I can't personally use them. All right, so for the number three spot, this is where I can already hear y'all little comment and fingers go into town. 
I decided to put a palette at number three. I know it's I oof, I can already feel it. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it and pray. Yeah, I picked thirsty. I know. Okay, so let me start breaking down my rationale behind this. So, and by the way, I did grab blood sugar just so I can make a couple of comparisons as to why thirsty for me is the winner. So let me start off by breaking open thirsty. I love this color scheme so freaking much. I love the layout. I love that it's really easy to use. It's easy to find what you're looking for. Pair it with other colors. I love that in this second row it has these really nice glitters. This was a formula that I feel like was much better than the one that was in that blue blood palette that I was talking about. These are just so, so beautiful. Like, oh my God. And these are colors that I would actually use. I would actually gravitate towards. And right off the gate, I love that. I love that this palette has neutrals I would use. It has pops of colors that I would use. I would put that on my inner corner for a pop. I'd put that through my crease for a pop or pack it all over the lid. But this for me is a practical palette that has fun that I would use, but also has neutrals that I would enjoy if I was in a hurry. And it has glitters and it has just that difference to it that I find super, super intriguing. And I just, I don't know, for me, I really, really loved that. Now, the reason that I did pick this, unfortunately, over the blood sugar palette was because those are the things for me that the blood sugar palette did not have. And this is entirely a personal preference thing because the formula of this is beautiful. I don't blame people for loving it. It is a great palette. But for me, my skin tone, my eyes, I have a very difficult time pulling off this red row right here. Like this is just not it for my skin tone. I look bloodshot. I look tired. I look like I have jaundice. I look like a whole different person when I am wearing these red tones and it doesn't matter how I wear them. It doesn't matter if it's all over the lid. It doesn't matter if it's through the crease. It doesn't matter where. If I use it in any substantial way at all, this entire row pretty much right here doesn't work for me. I could get away with these purple ones a little bit, but when I sheared them out, worked them through the crease, they made me look that same like jaundice, I'm tired, bloodshot kind of look. So that being said, I can use them, but I can only use them in sparing amounts. And then when I get up into these rows right here. Um, these couple of shades are just way too cool for me. I don't love those. I like the shimmer. I like this matte shade right here. I like a couple of these. The hot pink is nice. The hot purple is nice. The white shade is even nice, I guess. But overall, as a cohesive palette, when I look at this, I'm not drawn to it. When I look at it for cohesion, I just don't see it. Whereas when I look at Thirsty, I see cohesion. I see multiple days, multiple looks, and that is entirely personal preference, and I know that. And that's one of those things that going into this part I was like man you Lucy you gonna have some big explaining to do and I don't feel like it's something I need to defend I don't feel like it's something where I, I'm like super unjustified because I just want to drive home the fact that I don't hate the blood sugar palette I just get more use out of the thirsty ergo I like it more and I've explained that a couple times in this video like use and being able to get use out of something is very important for me now in the number two spot I'm not gonna stay here very long I've been talking about them forever the JSC lip scrubs. I think these things are so, so good. I've tried multiple from other brands, other everywhere, high end, low end, doesn't matter. His lip scrubs for me are the best. My favorite, my all time favorite is Blue Raspberry Sucker. That is the best lip scrub he makes, hands down. This one right here I grabbed, this is Grape Soda. And I think I actually have everyone, or almost, like I said earlier, almost everyone he's ever made. Now I will openly admit that in the past, I think his lip scrubs were better. I think the flavoring was more consistent. It was beautiful. Everything was so real. And as of late, it's drifted more and more toward like a chemical-y kind of taste where you could taste whatever else is going on in there. And that part I don't really love. But taking the flavor out of the way, the formulation of these is so nice. The way that they work on the lips, they do a great job at removing whatever's on there, crusted, busted lipstick, your lips are chapped, whatever's going on. You can really remove all that. It has a great grit to it. The consistency is amazing. I personally, I've been using these for years. I really, really do love them. Like I said, I've compared them across the board to others and I just, I never find anything close. All right, you guys, it is time for the number one spot. Something that I think Jeffree Star Cosmetics does very good all the way from the very beginning, his Velour Liquid Lipsticks. You guys, these are so good. Again, minusing the Blue Blood Collection. These are amazing. These shades right here are some of my favorite shades. Minus Celebrity Skin, which I can't find anywhere. I love these so much. His colors are beautiful. The way that these sit on the lips is amazing. His Velour Liquid Lipsticks are the lipsticks that made me believe I could actually love a matte liquid lipstick. This one right here, this is the shade 818. 
it is so bright and so beautiful I actually used this one time all over my lips but then I used it in the center of like a red lip for a pop it was so so good um this one for me the pigmentation is a little bit sheer on but it does go on the lips and look really beautiful so I didn't have any issues with it um this is birthday suit and oh my word birthday suit is a beautiful like peachy pink nude mixed with a little bit of brown in there so so good now again like I said before celebrity skin I love that I believe there's one Luna or Lunar or something like that. I like that shade as well. Um, this right here, this is, oh, this is a good one. This is allegedly, you guys, I wore this so many times. Oh my God, this color is excellent. The way it applies to the lips is beautiful. Again, lasts very consistently with all the rest. And then this is Soft Serve, which is a nice light pale pink color. And this one was really surprising to me because I honestly didn't think I would love it. But this formula is so beautiful. The way it sits, the way it wears. If you have a texture issue with um, crumbly matte liquid lipsticks, you don't have that with these. They apply like a dream. And I talk about this all the time on my channel. I'm very open about the fact that I do have autoimmune diseases one of which is fibromyalgia and it makes a lot of things very uncomfortable all your nerve endings are constantly on fire and for me that means my lips are very very sensitive I cannot use a goopy matte liquid lipstick one that goes on that dries down and it's super tight and intense can't use that one that goes on and it immediately starts to flake off like these friggin lip liners can't use that like I am very very strict with what I use and I'm able to use and his overall again minus the blue blood collection have been very great so consistent and the way that they go on is just it's it's truly they, they're called velour liquid lipsticks they have that nice like smooth consistency very lightweight thin on the lips and I really really enjoy them and for me that's what started his company that's what started his collection and I honestly think that that is what will carry him through any other time that he has there good or bad with a makeup release those will be his shining star attraction for years to come because the formula is truly beautiful and okay you guys that is my very first go around with this type of video I apologize. I can already tell editing page is so frustrated that I talk so much, but I really did have a lot to say. 10 products. I wanted to give you the good, the bad, the indifferent, and everything in between. And I just want to remind you, obviously, this is not everything from his collection. I do have a ton of his other stuff, um, but all of that kind of fell high, low, in between. It fell somewhere outside the realm of these products. And all of these products, really, I wanted to include in here because they're products that I feel like everyone has questions on. They ask me about fairly often. And I just wanted to give you guys kind of a rundown, a thought process on where I'm at with these, what I think and what I look for. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I do want to hear from you guys down below. Do you agree, disagree? What are your favorites, your least favorites, your thoughts overall? Leave all of that down below. Do not forget you can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. They're both linked in the description box. And don't forget you can subscribe and turn on your post notifications for this here YouTube channel. I upload five videos a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. They go up bright and early. We talk about everything, makeup we love, makeup we don't love, brand the whole bit we're really getting into it and trying to dive as deep as we can so don't forget to leave me all of your thoughts down below let me know do you like this style of video do you want to see more if so what is the next brand you would love to see give me all your thoughts and details you guys that is it thank you all so so much for watching please do not forget to have a great day night weekend whatever it is when you're watching this and i'll see you in the next one bye okay now item number eight would have been lower nope that's wrong and because of that this next item came in eight okay my face just now. Now for number nine, I'm going to enter something that might be a little bit of a shock, yo. His lip, yo.